So welcome viewers to Between the Stripes TV. It's our mid-season break League of Ireland review show. I'm joined here by a very excited David Lennon. It's myself, of course, your host, as usual, Kieran Burke. <laughs> David, thanks for joining me. We're here in Dundalk and you've got the, the top out. A great start to the season for the, for the champions and we'll touch on the Premier Division shortly. But we'll just run through Friday's night results first because we're going to do a kind of a two-for-one special here this show tonight. We'll obviously have our usual League of Ireland review show and we'll touch on how all the teams are doing and uh, break that down in terms of a mid-season report for each team. Uh, St. Pat's won, Finn Harps nil. Finn Harps are looking in trouble at the bottom, aren't they? They are. I mean, if you look at the, the overall scheme of things, you know, UCD and Finn Harps are going to be the bottom two. It just differentiated between what order. Uh, it's a pity that Finn Harps really aren't able to sustain um, a strong league position because they are a good addition to the league. I mean, they're one of the only Donegal sides mm. in the League of Ireland and it would be um, a shame to lose them again, but it's looking like it's going to be either them or UCD and my money would be on them at the moment having played, was it, three games more than UCD? Mm. Uh, people are saying Pats aren't having a great season for for the signings they made, but um, at the same time, they're level on points now with Derry. Uh, they have played two games more, though. Uh, do you feel Pats are in uh, the race for Europe, or has it been a poor season overall for, for Harry Kenny? I I was really impressed by the signings they made earlier in the, at the, you know at the beginning of the season, and um, I actually would have thought that they would have been doing very similar to what Bohemians are doing at mm. the moment, and and um, really challenged a lot more. However, I think the league position doesn't lie. They played two games more than Derry, and Derry are on the same points as them. Um, they played a game more than Bowes, and Bowes are six clear. So. Is it the lack of a goal scorer, at Pats? Because we're looking at the goal difference here. Derry have plus nine, St. Pats minus one. Now, they are on the same points, but as we said, Pats have played two games more. Mikey Drennan hasn't scored in a long, long time now. Is that an area maybe they need to address in the in the summer if they can? But then again, Pats have made big investment in the off-season. So if people feel that maybe they're not performing as well as they should have, will the club maybe be slightly reluctant to throw more funds at it? Well, I think it's a risk. I mean, it's like everything else uh, and, and Cork City being the prime example. I mean, if, if you look at the, the broader scheme, if St. Pat's throw big money at it and, and get a, a relatively big name striker in that's going to get them, you know, 15 goals bef between now and the end of the season, is that going to get them European football? It's hard to know because I can't see Bohemians slipping up mm. is the short answer. I think that they're such a steady unit and, and they play some lovely football. And um, I just I just can't see it personally. Mm. We'll move on to the next one. It was Sligo 1, Cork City 1, myself and John Breyer on Between the Stripes LOI podcast this week. We said if ever there was going to be a game that was a draw, it was this one. Sligo are the draw specialist. Cork, they're in a very, very poor run of form at the moment. Uh, Cork took the lead early on, six minutes in through Graham Cummins, who's having a bit of an off-season, I think it's fair to say. And uh, Ronan Coughlin, a man who's uh, desperate for goals at the moment too. He scored after 27 to equal it up, and that's how it ended 1-1. Uh, Who will be the happier side with that result? Um, well, you would have to say Sligo, but I mean, neither will be happy mm. if if you're looking at, at the, the broad scheme of it, because Cork obviously have bigger ambitions than being seventh in the table. Sligo, under Liam Buckley, you know, you would say that they have bigger ambitions than being sixth in the table. But I think um, in terms of current league form, it's just one of those things that it was very easy to predict a draw. Um, I mean, ultimately, as I said previously to, to, to one of the other matches, the league table doesn't lie and there's a considerable gap between Cork and Sligo and St. Pat's and Derry and that's just the way it is. And whether it comes down to form, probably, but, you know, the players that uh, Sligo have signed, they haven't really set the world alight. Mm. Um and the less I should say about Cork City, probably the better. Yeah, that's why I'll take the mic back <laughs> off you. But um, we should probably talk about uh, the big speculation at the moment. Obviously, big news the other night, Stephen Henderson leaving his role as manager of Cove Ramblers. And he has been linked heavily online with the Cork City job. And obviously, there's a big situation going on at Cork at the moment where we have questions over badges, pro badges, etc. Uh, the club are still looking into what the situation is there. But... Do you feel Stephen Henson would be a good fit if Cork were to be interested in him? Obviously, it's total speculation at the moment, but uh, reports this morning suggest Cork are looking to keep John Cotter as the main man there if they can with the regulations. 
again, that's something that, uh, you know, the badges are the key issue here. Uh, Cotter obviously doesn't have it. I know he's doing the course at the moment. Um, but of course, as under FAI rules, they uh, changed the goalposts and now you have to have the degree in order to, to participate in the league. Look, uh, whether Henderson is a good fit for Cork or not, I don't think so, is the short answer. Why is that? Um, I just feel, I mean, I always liked him and I always thought that he would be a really good addition um, to the Premier Division. Um, but in terms of the pressure and expectation he would be under... Well, is that expectation and pressure there? Because Cork have an absolutely dreadful season. They're only one point ahead of Waterford, who are third from bottom. Um, the budget, as we all know, has been slashed substantially there. So the supporters aren't expecting really them to challenge for the titles or Europe or anything. I think if Henderson was to come in now at this stage of the season, it'd be about steadying the ship, getting on a good run of form and looking to build something for next season then. Yeah, exactly. But the expectation will come back for next season. And that's my point. Like, I mean, nobody's expecting them now to make up, what is it, nearly 26 points um, between now and the end of the season. So, I mean, consolidate, you know, climb up a position or two and that would be key. Whether or not he'd be the right addition now I would remain to be seen because I think continuity, similar to what's happening at Oriel, continuity is key. Mm. And if the players respect John Cotter and his management style and the team behind him, then you wouldn't want to change that, especially with Europe on the horizon. Now, let's go to the big headline game of the weekend. It was that incredible Dublin derby. I know you watched this one live. Obviously, I was commentating in Bray, so unfortunately, I haven't had a chance really to see much of a bar. That stunning winning goal, but uh, a double from Daniel Mandrew, 2-1 uh, Daniel Carr with uh, Rovers goal. But once again, Rovers letting themselves down in the big derby game. They're five points behind Dundalk now. Is it over? <laughs> no comment. Uh, no, look at the. You don't end, want to do a Johnny Ward. Not a chance. <laughs> I wouldn't stoop that low. Uh, look at the end of the day. You know the Dublin Derby is one of the biggest games in in the League of Ireland calendar. Um, it's always a really tasty affair when it comes around, and Friday night was no different. Um, but Look to be a good advert for the league, from what I have seen. So, and of course, with Daily Mount being sold out, it really does make it a, a, a much mm. more appealing um, event. But look, in terms of positions and everything, I, th I think that Bowes probably deserve the win on the night. Um, Shamrock Rovers, they're lacking a goal scorer. I yeah. mean, it's as obvious as, as the nose on your face. They're lacking a goal scorer. But whether or not Bradley will go out and bring in one, I don't know if he is. Who? The rumour is, you know, David McMillan and all that. That would absolutely kill me. But um, I just, I can't see it. I, I just, I, I think that... Um, Obviously, the big game on, on the 27th of June now is... Is, is that Dundalk's chance to kill off Rovers? Because it, we've seen in recent years, Rovers, they're having great results, but against Bowes, they're struggling. And they've played Dundalk twice now in the last couple of seasons where I've been at the game in Talla and Dundalk have been well below par. It's ended in a nil-nil draw. Rovers fans have gone away thinking, not a bad result. And I've said, that was your chance to put a proper message down to Dundalk and you didn't take it. You settled for the nil-nil. So Dundalk are going to be looking there. They're going to be looking to kill off Rovers completely. Rovers need to win to really have any chance of keeping this title race alive. So there's more pressure now on Rovers in front of their own crowd than there will be from Dundalk, the champions going away from home. Yeah, well, I think with Europe on the horizon, it's, it's even more critical. I mean, if, if Rovers did manage to get the three points, it really would put you know, the Dundalk side under serious mm. pressure with the build-up now of games, and there's going to be a lot of games in hand here, mm. there, and everywhere. If Dundalk can manage to get the three points, um, I wouldn't say it's over, no, not at all, but I would say that it would be major advantage Dundalk because at the end of the day, Dundalk has lost two matches all season. Shamrock Rovers now have lost five, I believe. Um, that's the difference in league winning sides and uh, let me see we just have we look at that 
Yeah, five five yeah. losses overall. Yeah, so and Dundalk have lost two. So I mean, if if Rover, Rovers can't afford to lose one more game this season, because I just can't see Dundalk losing three or four. Mm. Um, obviously Derry, Waterford, Dundalk, you see not in action this weekend. Um, so we might speak about those teams just towards the end of the show. And uh, we do have interviews coming up on tonight's show with Harry Kenny and Ollie Horgan, and then we have interviews from across the first division as well. Um, we'll move to the first division now, and uh, Athlone two, Cabin Tealy two. I think that's five games without a win now for Cabin Tealy, so they're starting to lose a little bit of a uh, little bit of ground now at the top. Um, would you make Shelburne favourites with a four point gap at the break? Oh, I mean that that one is a very obvious one. I mean it's going to be an interesting one. I I, I think. You know, Shells, Longford, Drogheda, Limerick, Cabin Tealy, Bray to a, to a lesser extent are all still in with a shout. There's ultimately still only nine points between, is it sixth and, and first? Mm. Uh, so a couple of teams picking off each other and all of a sudden that league table could look very different. Um, it was a massive win for Bray the other night against Longford. I mean, that's the prime example of what I'm talking about. I mean, Bray, where they are in the league, they put themselves back in with a shout. Yeah, we, we were talking before the game, uh, both on the show during the week and, and during commentary, and we said, for Bray, if they lost this game, you were writing them totally out of it, yeah. um, considering they'd lost to Longford very comfortably early in the season. They've lost their two head-to-heads with Shells, and they were slipping up against the lesser sides in the division. I felt there was huge pressure on their manager, Gary Cronin, going into that game, and when that winning goal went in, he was almost out on the halfway line. He sprinted out onto the pitch. He could see what I meant to him, see what I meant to the players. A huge statement for Bray. They're right back in it. From a Longford Town point of view, Neil Fenn was absolutely disgusted. He was sick after the game to lose it. 2-1 up with 10 minutes to play and they concede two set pieces. You simply cannot do that if you have ambitions for the title. No, definitely not. And I mean, was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was this not a similar trait that happened Longford last season as well? Longford had big issues with set pieces last season. Now this season, their defensive record has been absolutely superb. Uh, we'll just take a little look at the table here. Um, overall, Longford have only conceded 11 goals. Uh, Shelburne have conceded 13. So a lot of those 11 have come in the last couple of weeks. Early on the season, Longford were keeping clean sheets for fun. Mm. So to concede two set pieces, it, it, it's very, very worrying. And that's something Neil Fenn and Darrell Doyle will want to kick straight out of the team now during the break. They, they can't be conceding goals like that. Yeah, well, it's true what to say, you know, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I mean, you know, it has to be consistent over the whole season. Um, and it's something like a game like Bray could cost you when it comes to the nitty gritty. But look, they're still in with a shout. There's only four between themselves and Shelburne. You'd have to seriously fancy Shelburne. I mean, with the money they've thrown at it um, and the experience. the experience, the fan base, everything that they have up there. um they would be a great addition to the Premier Division. And, you know, they've been in, in the First Division now for quite some time, and it's probably time that um, that they made the, the big leap. Whether or not they could stay in the Premier Division if they did go up remains to be seen, but it would be an interesting one, to say the least. Yeah, something we'll speak out again, but I definitely have concerns for if one or two sides do go up from the First Division this season. I have concerns because I think the standard in the First Division has been very, very poor from some of the games I've seen. Um, it's a flip of a coin, a lot of the games. There's very, very little between the sides. Even Shelburne, as you said, they've invested heavily, and in a lot of the games I'm watching, and I haven't been overly impressed, but they're getting a lot of 1-0 wins, and that's the sign of champions. Um, well, it was, a big, it was a big result for them, um, you know, to, to beat Drogheda. <laughs> They were scoring goals for fun. They were scoring goals for fun um, on Friday night. It was a big statement of intent and it put, especially with it coinciding with that last minute winner for Bray, you could tell that the celebrations yeah. up there would yeah. have been. It, it was a crazy night in the first division. I mean, with 10 minutes to go, Longford are 2-1 up and Shelburne are drawn. So Longford are sitting top of the first division table going into the mid-season break and they're looking to bring a couple of players in the maybe. Longford fans would be absolutely delighted with that. Out of nowhere, they can see two goals. Shells get a late winner. Shells are now four points clear going into the break. And Longford fans are thinking, if we lose any more ground, we're, we're in big trouble. So it's amazing how things turn so quickly. Yeah, and look, I mean, I, I still wouldn't write it off. I mean, the playoff positions, ultimately, and I think you and I both would have discussed this at the very beginning of the season, you know, realistically, Longford probably when looking at the broader scheme, Longford were always kind of targeting the playoff mm. rather than going out and winning the first division. So they're still well and truly in the fray there. Um, you know, they're arguably on a relatively good run of form bar the odd result here and there. Um, 
Drogheda, again, still in with a great chance. Only a point behind Longford in third. Um, and then Limerick, three points behind them. I mean, what a division that is. As you say, the standard is relatively poor, but it makes it very competitive. Yeah, and just from a Limerick point of view, what they have done this season, considering everything going on off the pitch there, incredible stuff. And it looks like Conor Ellis, one of their main players, is on his way out now in the in the summer window. So that's going to be a big blow for Limerick. And if other players follow, the wheels could come off there. Mm. Uh, Cabin Tilly, as we said, they've lost a lot of ground recently. They're down to... Um, fifth in the table now on 29 points but they're level with Limerick so they're still banging uh, with a shout of the playoffs as are Bray on 28 you have Cove there now they're on 19 Henderson's gone you're probably looking at maybe the likes of Cabilla, Fernandez, and Taylor could be all um, picked up by other clubs you'd be very very worried for Cove now Galway are having an absolutely dreadful season on 13 points uh, Project DNA not going to plan there at loan great start but only 12 points now overall and Wexford again they've improved greatly from last season but they're still bottom and they're three points off the pace of Athlone so uh, that's really the first division roundup as I said we have interviews to come up from um, Athlone's game against Cabin Teeley with Aaron Miles and Terry Butler and uh, interviews as well from the Longford Bray game with Dara Doyle and Gary Cronin but um, David before we go I suppose we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the teams that weren't in action in the Premier Division and uh, one of them obviously is Dundalk what have you made of the job that Vinnie Parth has done so far? I think it's a, I think it's an incredible job he's done um, I mean at one point in the season, we were so many points behind Shamrock Rovers. That was it. Game over, you mm. know, and, and, and everyone was practically handing Rovers the trophy at that point. Now, all of a sudden, you know, 10 weeks on, we're five clear and there's not there's not a mention of anything now. So, look, the standard, the, the style of football has certainly changed. That, yeah, this is thing. something I mentioned on last week's show, and you obviously see them every week, so I'd like to get your views on whether I'm correct in saying this or not. What I've said is obviously the, still, the basis is still there for possession football and moving the ball quickly and dominating teams possession-wise, but there looks to be at times that uh, they're, they're more inclined to, when they see a long ball, they're not afraid to play it. They will play that ball in behind up, or up to Hooban and look to get the balls off him or play a ball into the channel, and that's why they're scoring so many goals is because they will compromise slightly at times and look to go that more direct yeah and I mean you would argue that that is uh, an even stronger trait yeah. in this Dundalk side now that's not a criticism at yeah. all for me I, I'm saying when they see a long ball they're not thinking oh, I play a square keep it well, it's not. it's certainly not as easy on the eye as what it was under Stephen Kenny but what I will say is it's arguably I mean look whether you say it's effect more effective or not you can't really say it the league table isn't lying at the moment we know we have what 29 goals of a goal difference um you know 10 is it 10 goals of a difference now between ourselves and rovers yeah 10 goals i mean should that's that goes back to the lack of a striker at rovers though as well doesn't it it does it does but it also comes down to us playing relatively um relatively well look it's still not over there's still a long way to go um but i have to say it's it's such a a pleasure to to watch this Dundalk side because every year we still are able to put in performances and grind out last minute winners and the hunger never goes away and I think that is the interesting thing of it you know people talked about in the Premier Division or Premier League in in England you know would Manchester City have that same desire mm. to go again it's the same with Dundalk you know Cork City every time somebody new won it would they have the desire to go again and Dundalk are showing absolutely no signs of letting off and if they do manage to get to three points in Tala um, I, you know without saying anything too jinx, <laughs> jinxable um, you know you would have to say that it's it's hard to see Dundalk dropping eight points between now and the end of the season if it does get to that. So it's it's a wonderful league, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and just final word before you go, Europe coming up very soon. Um, who would you like? Would you like a tie against Linfield maybe? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would be great. Um, look, everyone loves the old summer holidays and, and loves getting away to, to sunnier climates. But um, I think you have to be strategic now in, in terms plotting of way. plotting your way through it. If you can get Linfield and... and um, get seeded then in the second round. That's that's the key. Uh, that's the key. Uh, and I think, you know, obviously, even if you are defeated in this first round, you fall into the second round of the Europa League and it's always a nice little 
mm. cherry. But um, on the broader scheme, Dundalk have ambitions to go forward. Uh, you do want to get a relatively close draw with similar styles that you can that you know a little bit about. I think Linfield would be the absolute ideal draw. Um, but going forward, then you're into into relatively bigger names in round two and round three, and uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, you know, Europe under Vinny Perth would be very different to Europe under. Is it fair to say that this is maybe where people will judge Vinny Perth? Yeah, I, I I do think so. Uh, I I think it'll it'll really um set him apart in terms of how he plays. I mean, obvi- obviously people have this vision of Dundalk under Stephen Kenny that Europa League run. Mm-hmm. You know the the Bati Barasov and the Legia Warsaw. Um, you know we do have a, a certain caliber. Um, but we were completely outplayed against Larnaca last year. So. It, it'll all come down to whether or not, um, I suppose, the long ball is, is going to be effective uh, going forward. Look, it's it's a flick of a coin. If we can get through a round or two and get a few pounds in the pocket, mm. that's ultimately all you need and build on that. And um, obviously maintain your title challenge and your FAI Cup and, and hopefully come out on, on top. Well, David, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for joining me, folks. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, and as I said, we have interviews with Harry Kenny, Ollie Horgan, Aaron Miles, Terry Butler, Dara Doyle and Gary Cronin to follow. So hit the subscribe button. And for Dundalk fans that are tuning in, um, excellent interview with Mark Devlin, the Dundalk CEO, on last week's Between the Stripes LOI podcast. So give that a listen. You can find Between the Stripes LOI podcast on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify or your favourite podcast outlet. And as always, all our content is available on Between the Stripes here's our interviews Bray Wanderers boss Gary Cronin joins me on Between the Stripes TV after a superb 3-2 win at home to Longford Town Gary some people were saying that if your team didn't win this that you might have been cut adrift in terms of the playoffs so we've seen your celebrations there when that third goal went in this is a huge win for Bray now isn't it yeah to be honest with you with two or three minutes ago listening to you say to me 3-2 win oh, Jesus Christ we're winning this game 3-2 we deserve that bit of luck we've hadn't uh, had that all season Um a great bit of character to bring ourselves yeah. back into it. Um, I thought the manner in which the second goal for Lankwood was scored was obviously our own fault, but would have been harsh on us. Mm. thought the game was an excellent game of football, entertaining. Um, Lankwood played some really, really good football, which is evident to see. And, you know, I really thought a draw would have been a fair result considering the effort of both teams put in. Um, but obviously, we put in an unreal effort in the last few minutes to try and uh, try and get ourselves back into it. And Huey Douglas pops up with an absolutely fantastic winner. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to go from one emotion to that emotion within three three or four minutes was uh, <laughs> something special, I suppose. They say games are decided in moments, and there's so many moments you could pick out in this game. I'm thinking just before half time when your team hit the crossbar, when mm. no offense to Dino Haller, and it looked easier to score than miss when he hits the crossbar from six yards. Then uh, Longford in the second half, Paul Keegan gives the ball away inside his own area. Mm. Jamie Doyle doesn't pull the shot away just in time, and uh, there's a cover and tackle from a Bray defender. And as you mentioned, then the, the second goal was a, a real calamity from your side. So to show the character you did, it, it, it's great testament to your players yeah and, and look you know this is the lads have been fantastic you know nobody goes out to miss chances but mm. we've done that a lot this season and hence we've had a few defeats that we shouldn't have under our belt but that's that's football Dino's as you say Dino's chance was a great chance and I really thought um, that was going to hit the back of the net but it didn't and that's that's what happens and I thought it was the, the incident in the second half with it was Sean Heaney with the recovery tackle it was an absolutely fantastic tackle because I thought there we go there's 2-1 and we had to get ourselves back into the game but look come here um, the character of the lads you know it's a never say die attitude type of thing and uh, you know to be honest with you it's in both teams I can see that mm. um, uh, Longford are going to be there to the wire tonight's result for us obviously being a win has us you know in there um, on the coattails of the playoffs and you know the way teams are beating each other it's not a given I know totally Shell, unpredictable results again tonight yeah exactly you know and I think Shells are Shell's after pip and drop it in the last mm. few minutes Captain T got a last minute goal here's crazy in the last few minutes so I mean it's a really entertaining league but that doesn't mean like you know the looks of Shells can't drop you know mm. a, a defeat or two so listen it can go right to the wire in that respect but from our own point of view I think it was important for us to get that you know that finish was great. Get us back in. Um, I think you know if we lost tonight, obviously the title would have been gone. It's a, it's a, it's a slim hope as it is, but it would have obviously made it more difficult for the playoffs. So for us, I'm delighted. I won't keep you too much longer. It's starting yeah. to rain here, but um, 
it's strange from a game that's had five goals to be talking about strong defensive performances but your two centre halves Campwell and Heaney were, as you said they made some great last ditch tackles some great heading of the ball and then you bring big Huey Douglas off the bench I think a lot of people were surprised that maybe he didn't start the game yeah. we all know what he can do in the air he showed it with that winner yeah I mean look I mean there's, 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 there's reasons why certain players don't start games you know he has been absolutely brilliant for us and conti will continue to be and he's such a professional uh, character to be perfectly honest with you but you look at certain attributes you know to try and uh, exploit the opposition in certain areas and you try and pick your best players for that you know managers can get it right and get it wrong like, you know And but as you can see Killian and Sean were immense mm. tonight it's, it's um, and obviously Huey comes on and does that like you know I'll take that every day of the week you know so listen I'm delighted with the attitude and the commitment of the players um, there was never give up attitude there particularly when we went 2-1 down could have easily gone into our shells and just thought you know it looked against us but we didn't and you know we created the chances to try and get corners and look we took the chances when they came Final word mid-season break now as you said you're still in the mix for the playoffs and maybe more um, you're going to look to make some additions in the window I think every club tries to you know and we, we're no different you know we're having a look around and you know, you know, I was talking to Neil beforehand, you know, and it's the same old story. We'd love to have more goals, you know. Mm. So is there is there is there that person out there? They tend not to be in the mid season window if they're scoring goals they're tied up somewhere yeah. else. But it's not about that, it's just making your squad better and stronger and to help the current players that you have um to achieve our goals. Like, you know, and our squad is a bit light. And we knew that from the start. And um, if we can add one or two, a um, little bit of experience, it'll make us stronger and it'll help us towards achieving the goal of minimum trying to reach those playoffs. You know, and to do that, we need we need more players in. So if they're available, if they make us better, we get them in. If there's no players that make us better, but then we just struggle on to do it with what we have. You know? Gary, great, nice entertainment. Well done on a great result, and cheers. thanks for speaking to us. Cheers, cheers. Longford Town assistant Dara Doyle joins me at the Carlisle grounds. Longford Town have gone down in a five-goal thriller, 3-2 against Bray Wanderers. Dara, your team led 2-1 with about 10 minutes to go. Um, a very fortuitous own goal, but at that stage, Longford were well on top in the game. So to can be undone by two set pieces, you must be absolutely gutted. Yeah, it's uh, really, really disappointing. Uh, I think you look at the second half in a hole and I think we were a much better team, although maybe we could have created a few more chances. Mm. Um, we got a bit of, a bit of luck with the, our own goal for the second goal with the own goal from the diagonal ball and I think at that stage we were in the 88th minute, 86th minute maybe um, and it looked like we'd had a bit of luck and it had gone our way and it looked like we could maybe hang on but unfortunately um, two set pieces late in the game have, have really cost us. Yeah. And I'm sure you weren't taking any notice of what was going on at other games but when Longford were leading with that 10 minutes to go Shelburne were drawn against uh, Drotted so Longford were actually on top of the division so now at the end of the game we're talking about Longford being four points off the pace it, again it must be hugely demoralising. No listen it's very disappointing we wanted to go into the break with a win under our belt and to be as close as possible to Shells if they did get the win against Drogheda mm. we, we'd still have been a point behind them we're four points behind now obviously Drogheda are still a point behind us and I think come to Draw, if I'm right. Oh, yeah. um, so, listen, yeah, very disappointing, but I think we've got to look at the, the big picture with 10 games to go. There's still plenty that's going to happen. There really is. Um, I think there's lessons to be learned for us tonight. Um, the two set pieces have lost us the game. Yeah. And, and, and that's what it was. And your back four has been absolutely solid as a rock this season. I said on the commentary here about um, Conor Kenny again tonight, how good he was, but it was so surprising to see your team done undone by two set pieces like that. Yeah, no, it, it, I think it's the first time it's it's really happened to us this season. Um, and listen, it is, it's very disappointing. I think at the time, we'd probably, A, it was off the pitch for one of the corners, but he'd gone down with a, with yeah. a bad leg and or whatever. Sam Burden as well seemed to have a knock. Yeah, well, he, should, he should, should perhaps someone have maybe we, let him sit down for a few minutes and then get the substitution made first? Well, he was, he was put under pressure to get up mm. on the pitch. Uh, we tried to make the sub, but the fourth official was further down, having dealt with, A, to get him off the pitch. I'd asked the fourth official, could we make the substitution mm. before the corner? he said we couldn't and we had to wait for after it so we had to deal with it with A off the pitch and with Sam not fully right going in as well but listen I'm making excuses here talking about that we still had players on the pitch they had one or two men left back so we, we realistically had enough bodies in the box to deal with it and, and we didn't and it's cost us Yeah I suppose the first one it, it's, it's a flick on it it's gone to Campwell at the back post who finished as well but the second one you must be very frustrated about because it's big Huey Douglas has got his head on that we all know his threat in the air mm -hmm. that was the only place that ball was ever going he's got on it and he's put it in the net for the winner no, he has, and I think you look at. I think a couple of weeks ago, he's he's come on or he started a game, yeah. and he's I think he scored two headers yeah. late in games, or one of them maybe was an own goal. But again, it's true pressure from him on the ball, and that's his biggest threat. And we we know that with you, Douglas, we had a player on him for the incident, and listen, we we haven't got close enough, and like I don't know how many times I've said it, it's, it's cost us tonight. What's the atmosphere like in the dressing room after that? I think everyone's disappointed. 
it's a natural you know I mean we look from being two minutes from the end of the game looking that we're going to win the game and go into the break with a victory and keep us right mm. up there and it's just totally flipped on the head to concede two goals so late in a game like that listen it's really disappointed but it's up to us, us and the staff to to make everyone aware that there is 10 games to go as disappointed as we are we really have to learn from that tonight Ah, thanks very much. Yeah, I'm delighted to be joined by Finn Hart's manager, Ollie Horgan. And Ollie, uh, how do you assess that performance this evening? Do you think you should have deserved more than what you got in the end? Uh, Possession wise, though, chances wise, yeah. Um, yeah. I thought we'd have the, the, the more clear cut chances despite feeding off you know, another retard of the position. Um, we weathered the storm in the first 20 minutes and we probably had the best chance of the first half from, from Nathan Boyne. But when you don't take your chances, when the little spells you are on top, it often comes back to haunt you. And, you know, Gene Clark got down the right hand side and pulled it back for Jake Walker and it was game over and, and, and we paid a price. You know, we played quite well and still came out the narrow side of it and, and that, that's the disappointing part. If we don't play well, we get pumped. When we play well, we still come out short. So be it. How do you assess then, like obviously you were in the mid-season break now, how do you assess then basically like your first half of the season so far? Uh, as, as a league, it's, it's a lot stronger than when we were there before. We were there, I think it's two, three years ago now, mm. the last time we were up for two years. Uh, very, very difficult to, 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 to get points. If you make mistakes, you get punched. And uh, that's exactly what happened tonight, and most certainly in the last couple of weeks. Uh, attack wise, some of the sides are, you know, the finishing has been very good. I don't know if I'd say Jake's finished here, he might have had better ones, but that way, you know. <laughs> uh, look, it's, it's, it is what it is. We we're down at the bottom of the table for a reason. We need to improve both, yeah. both finishing and especially defensively to have any hope of trying to get to a playoff spot. Which, yeah. But look, we'll break here, we'll, we'll lick our wounds and come back in a week's time and see where we're at. And then finally, would, do you think there could be any like players potentially coming in during the transfer window? Uh, well, if you have any fundraising for us that, that <laughs> we could, we could uh, take, take advantage of, yeah. But um, no, we, we, the bunch of lads that are there, the majority of them, if at all, will be what we'll see it through. Um, yeah, we're always on the lookout for players, without doubt, but it's easier said than done for, for maybe the what we can offer and, and geographically where we are. But there's, there's lads in there that want to be in the club for, for no other money to put it that way to you. And it's hard going for them as well, but uh, it'll be the majority of them that found all that will see us through the season. All right, well, thanks very much, Take care. Cheers. Take care. By St. Patrick's leading manager Harry Kelly after their 1 0 win over Finn Hearts. First of all, before we get into the game, Harry, how, do, how is Reese McCabe? Um, we haven't quite assessed him just yeah. yet, but um, his leg is pretty bad and he's hobbling, hobbling in the changing room, so um, it was a poor enough tackle on him, it uh, was pretty high. Um, but we, we'll get him assessed pretty shortly and see how he's doing. But uh, he's in decent spirits in there, so he's not too bad. Okay, about the game itself, how do you assess your performance this evening? Um, a bit disappointed with the performance, but delighted to get the three points. Um, only played in spells, um, particularly in the first ten minutes. We were very good, created loads of chances. But uh, after that, after that, it was uh, fits and starts. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed at performance. And the goal actually came from two of your subs. You must be pleased with uh, the way your two subs combined for the goal. Yeah, delighted. Uh, Dean did really well on the right when he came in, and uh, Jake is uh, a young lad that's only new to the uh, electricity league. So. He's come through our um, under-19 system, so he was very, very good when he went on. He's a dangerous player and took his goal very well. Brilliant. And then, how do you then assess your first half of the season then so far? Um, pretty mixed. Um, we need to be more consistent. Uh, we need to be... I was hoping for more points than we currently have, but uh, there's a full half of the season to look forward to with Europe, and uh, we're, we're in a nice enough position uh, behind Derry. And just finally, then, where, where would you fancy the European draw at Europa League draw colour next week? Where would you fancy to go? Uh, not too far. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't mind getting Rangers, uh, someone like that. But, uh, let's see what happens. All right, cheers. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm here with that lower manager, Terry Butler, after he's two to jog against Cabin Healy. You must be disappointed with how the game finished from, your, from a loo. Yeah, but look, it feels like a loss, more than a, a point gained. Uh, just disappointed we didn't see the game out. Uh, I think it was the 92nd uh, minute. Uh, they were obviously pushing on to, to get the equaliser, and uh, well, I think we just dropped off a, a bit. But I'm more uh, happy with the performance of, of the team and the attitude tonight. We changed things up a bit. We had a good bit of steel in the middle of the park, and it was great for uh, the two strikers to get goals tonight, which I thought was important. Um, you had Paddy Kelly, who uh, had an immense game tonight, from his leaving cert over the last two weeks and brought him in he didn't train at all this week and you know to see them like the young lads of 18 19 coming in and, and working like that was excellent you know
He showed great character after falling behind and to get back ahead at 2 1. Yeah, but there was a, there was a belief that we were got, you know, we weren't going to be beaten tonight. And I thought, when we, as I said, when we got the second goal, we could have probably went down and got, and got a third. But, you know, at the end of the day, it, it was the. I was looking for a performance and a result, and you know, I, th- I think we got both tonight. Were you happy enough with defending on the two goals, or were you a bit, a bit disappointed for uh, Manny's uh, the header? I don't know what happened. We'll have a look back on uh, on the video because we've been solid. Like uh, obviously, their throw wins are as good as corners, and I, tell, I thought we dealt with them. But I'm always talking about this 60 seconds of you know concentration. If you if you switch off, you get punished in this league, and that's what happens. You know, it's now 13 games without a win. Confidence must be a bit low at the moment, but. Performance like that, I suppose, will help it a little bit. Yeah, well, look, I look on the I look on the positive sides of, of of the game. We've had a defeats, but they were marginal defeats. Uh, like last week, we probably should have got something in, in draw. Uh, you know, probably. I think our worst game was against Bray here, but I think everybody has one of them games where they, you know they, they get a right hammering and that switches us on then and, and builds on it. So all we can do is I'll take the positive out of tonight's game. Obviously, the windows come in now and we bring in a few uh, fresh faces, which which is important. We know the areas we have to build on, and I'm looking forward to kicking into the, the second part of the season. Will Dean Williams will continue that club after his loan spell ends, or any word on that? Look, D- Dean is playing at the moment. Uh, uh, for us, he, he's doing he's doing well. He's enjoying his football here, which is is, is very important. He's getting a lot of game time, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, Dean is part of the, the, this club. So now with the mid-season break, would you suppose the chance just to take stock and try build on the so this performance for the rest of the season and try to move up to table as well. Today. Yeah, well, look, we, we we know where we we know where we have to have to build, and we've we've had a couple of players in training with us, and uh, one or two uh, new signs be coming in in the window, which is important. Uh, well, we said, look, you know, we get to a, a stage where you know we we know what we have to do going forward, and uh, we're trying to address that. Okay, thank you very much. All right. I'm here with Lone Townkeeper Aaron Miles at Resize 2 2 draw with Kevin Healy. You must be disappointed to see the late equaliser like that. Yeah, because we played really well. I thought the first half we played well, the second half we played well, quite good chances. They had chances as well, but I think overall we should have won the game. Yeah. It, was a, it was a poor goal that we said. You should do a bit of character to come from behind to take the lead in the first place, though, which must be happy enough that you've shown that bit of character. Yeah, it was a great goal from Evan. Took it really well, took it early. That's what they caught the keeper on his near post and uh, the second goal. Dino was in there. He's a goal scorer and he got what he deserved on him. It's not exactly a win, but and it's got now it's hurting games that it wins, so it's most confidence mustn't be must be a bit low as well at this at, at this stage. Ah look, there's there's, there's a good uh, good bunch of lads in there, you know. We're sticking together. We should have won the game, we didn't we didn't get the bit of luck that we deserved tonight and we'll go again uh, and we're back from the break against Galway. Well, the break's probably coming at a good time for you in a way, is it? You can kind of refocus now and focus on the rest of the season. Ah, yeah. Look, I think we're all looking forward to the break, you know, a week off. And we're back in next Monday then. We'll crack on again next Friday. All right, thanks very much. All right. All right.